What's going on everybody? So as most of you know who subscribe to my channel or watch my videos pretty often, I really love the streaming service Shutter, and I pay really close attention to when they add new films or original films and I try to watch as many of them as I possibly can because I think compared to Amazon or uh, Prime Video or Netflix or Hulu or any of these major streaming services that Shutter really gives this platform for independent artists to put their content out there and to possibly get seen by an audience that will receive their movie a little better for those horror connoisseurs and people who really enjoy the horror genre. And this is a movie that I saw the poster for, heard a little bit about, uh, not too much, not a lot of favorable reviews of this one, but I was interested to see it nonetheless. And the movie I'm going to be talking about today is The Scary of 61st. Before we get into the video, as always, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot. It lets me know the type of content you're looking for and what kind of reviews you'd like me to do. Obviously, I try to tackle films from all different genres uh, because I, as a person who loves film, try to watch things that encapsulate all different genres and I have fun kind of diving into different worlds and watching movies of different genres. But I'd like to know what you guys are looking for and which films I review that you enjoy seeing the most. The Scary of 61st is directed by Dasha Nekrasova. Two roommates' lives are upended after finding out that their new Manhattan apartment harbors a dark secret. This is a movie that I really did not like at all, uh, which is upsetting because I try on my channel not to completely shit on things because as someone who's in film school, I understand how difficult it is to go about making a film and putting yourself out there to create content for people to watch. And so I try to look at things through a lens of like, hey, what was going through your mind when you make this? and do my best to kind of understand where people are coming from. And there's certain circumstances where it's really hard for me to talk about something and not shit on it completely because things are just so bad. And this movie is not good. I think it has a really interesting idea that's just executed very poorly and that the screenplay was written by someone who should not be writing screenplays. And that is what I think is the biggest detriment to this film. Because before I get into talking about all the things I couldn't stand about this movie, let me tell you something I did like about it, which is the cinematography. This movie is clearly shot on film, and it's shot beautifully. Every shot is really beautiful to look at. There are some transitions that are a little kind of head-scratchingly bad. Uh, the editing is not perfect, but I will say the visuals for this film are gorgeous. Uh, the movie looks beautiful. I'm not 100% sure why with this subject matter that it was chosen to be shot on film other than the person who made the film was interested in shooting on film. But yeah, uh, other than the cinematography, I don't have a lot of nice things to say. This movie is about these two women who move into this apartment together. Living in this apartment, this woman just randomly shows up to say that she's investigating Jeffrey Epstein's suicide and that this apartment that they're living in was originally owned by Jeffrey Epstein. And the movie is one of the girls who's living at the apartment with this girl who shows up out of nowhere, starts investigating all of the things that happened with Epstein's suicide and all of the things that he did, the terrible things that he did while he was alive, and just sort of goes off the rails into this possession-esque film that really makes no sense. And speaking of possession, you can tell that's probably a movie these filmmakers watched and thought, hey, we'll try to use some stuff from that. And it did not translate very well. Uh, it, the performances in this movie, first off, are not very good. Dasha Nekrasova, who directed this film, is also the girl who shows up, which she's just credited in the film as the girl. According to the internet, when I searched her on Google, she's a podcaster, which makes a whole lot of sense that a podcaster would want to make a film about this subject matter, which, don't get me wrong, I find this subject matter to be really interesting, despite the fact that it's incredibly disturbing and awful that so many uh, young women were taken advantage of and raped and sexually assaulted by this horrible human being 
who was a piece of garbage. But it is interesting to explore that and kind of how th certain things were covered up for so long and all of the other people who were involved. And I do think the subject matter is really interesting and I'm sure there's people out there still today that were involved in Epstein's Island and all that that still have not been brought to justice, which is incredibly upsetting. But when you're looking at that through this lens, translating it into a horror film is, fan is a fantastic idea because it is a horrifying concept on its own already and adding this layer of supernatural element can be really fascinating but what you get instead is just this really cringe-worthy dialogue of these people just reading internet articles and kind of speculating back and forth and then this element of romance being introduced for some reason not really sure why and then the movie takes this turn where one of the girls living in the apartment starts to seemingly get possessed by the spirit of a young girl who uh, was a, you can assume was probably uh, raped or sexually assaulted by Epstein or one of the people involved and she starts like acting out with her boyfriend where she like asks her boyfriend to treat her like she's 14 and like they're going to Epstein's Island and it's just really cringeworthy and it feels like shock value to just get shock value rather than like a really interesting and unique way to sh to showcase this material and by the time the third act happens it just is kind of like quick and it resolves super fast to where you're like okay I don't really care about any of that uh, the whole like possession-esque element there's this scene the reason why it reminds me so much of possession is when you watch the 1981 film possession and you see Isabella Johnny's character, the scene where she's going through the subway tunnel and she's possessed. She's like throwing her groceries everywhere and kind of going out of control. And it's this really long take sequence. It's beautifully shot and it really encapsulates the whole feeling of the film of like this. She's very normal at first and just kind of goes crazy and watching this character's psyche be damaged. You have this scene where the one girl who's being possessed by the spirit is walking through downtown New York and it's it's not a whole long take sequence but it's spliced together to where she's like in these clothes that are trying to make her look like she's younger and she's like touching herself and rubbing up all over this stuff and you can kind of see the similarities in the two scenes but it's just so like cringe worthy how it's done and how it's presented and i'm all for movies that want to use like gross out and shock value stuff to make a point or as long as it's enjoyable. I mean, even if you look at something like John Waters' Pink Flamingos, which is a film that is over the top and disgusting for the sake of comedy, uh, there's some things in that movie that still like are jarring and upsetting to watch, but there's more of an intentionality in that film, and I can enjoy that more than this, which just feels really poorly put together poorly acted and poorly written. It's disappointing because like I said, I think the subject matter is interesting and this is one that I would skip uh, if you have not watched this on Shutter yet. Just don't do it. It's not worth your time. Have you seen The Scary of 61st yet? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. I thought this movie was awful. One of the worst things I've watched this year thus far. Uh, I would not recommend it. As always, if you like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you as the viewer are looking for. And as always, Internet, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.